quarterback university. First, it was Kelly who rewrote the record book. Kozar followed and set new standards for the Hurricanes. Then Testaverde, who shattered all the marks again. The newest rising star is Steve Walsh, a sophomore who lacks the great arm, but seems to have all the other qualities to be a very good college quarterback. All-American defensive end Daniel Stubbs leads an exceptional defense, a unit that may be strong enough to carry Jimmy Johnson to another shot at a national title. This could be the best Arkansas team Ken Hatfield has had since taking over as head coach. The defense is anchored by the quickest nose guard in all of football, All-American Tony Cherico. The Hogs call their wishbone halfbacks their best in a decade. Junior James Rouse is averaging almost five yards a carry, while another junior, Joe Johnson, already has 14 career touchdowns. It's a party atmosphere when the team comes from Fayetteville to Little Rock and the fans come from all over the state to see their beloved Razorbacks. War Memorial Stadium has been a great place to play for the Razorbacks. They have won 10 straight here, going back to the start of the 1984 season. That shouldn't bother Miami, though. The Hurricanes have won 15 straight regular season games on the road against great opposition under Jimmy Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Lee Corso, and it's great to have you with us for Miami against Arkansas. You just saw what a great team Miami has been on the road over the years, but you have to remember that their sophomore quarterback, Steve Walsh, has never started a game on the road before. Yeah, quarterback Walsh has got to make sure he plays within his own abilities and not try to win this game early by himself. Most important, he's got to avoid an early interception so that crowd will get on him, and then there will be a lot of pressure on him. Now, he is going to be going against a very good and a very complicated Arkansas defense. Arkansas uses the same defense that Penn State did to beat Miami. I mean, the Fiesta Bowl, they keep everything inside of the players and in front of them, and then they punish those receivers and try to force them to drop the football. No, the people in Arkansas think the key to this is for their offense to keep the ball away from Miami, and they have to do it against a great Miami defense. Arkansas is going to try to run the football, keep the clock going, make some first downs, stay as close as they can to the fourth quarter, and hope this Little Rock crowd can win it for them. Should be a great ball game. Number seven, Miami, against 10th ranked Arkansas in front of a sellout crowd from War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Live CFA football is being brought to you by Mikolo. So exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Mikolo. By Good News Plus with the Luber Smooth Strip for extra smoothness and comfort only from Gillette. And by the people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. Let's get you back out now to Little Rock, where they scream, Pig Suey. You've been working on that, I'm sure, Lee Corso. Absolutely. Uh, the University of Miami Whiteouts against the Arkansas defensive backs. That should be a big matchup early. Number nine, Brian Blades, and number 47, Mike Urban. Great players with great speed. Watch them to go deep early. Arkansas must run the football, especially inside with their fullbacks. Number 21, Sammy Van Dyke, and number 18, freshman Barry Foster. Big, big plays inside necessary for Arkansas to win this ball game. Jimmy Johnson on the sideline in his fourth year with Miami. He has won 30 games and was the captain of the national championship team here at Arkansas in 1964. And his teammate on that ball club was Fred Hatfield, the head coach at Arkansas, or Ken Hatfield, excuse me, who led the nation in punt returns two years in a row, including that 1964 national championship team at Arkansas. Kendall Trainer will start the ball game off as Miami will receive the opening kickoff. And there is a look at Trainer. The deep receivers, number three, Randall Hill, number 21, Alex Johnson. This has been a tough, tough ticket 
A lot of scalping activity. This stadium seats 53,250, and it's been a sellout forever. Hill, six yards deep, and Miami will start from its own 20-yard line. They'll be led by sophomore quarterback Steve Walsh, who hit 63% of his passes in the opening game. Behind him, number 24, Warren Williams, the senior, and Melvin Bratton, number five, he's the fullback. Brian Blades and Michael Urban, quality wide receivers. Charles Henry is also a great tight end. O'Neal and Patchen are the offensive tackles. The interior line, Sullivan and Proven at the guards. Rod Holder, a 254-pound sophomore, is the starting center. And now Alfredo Roberts, number 87, will come in and start at tight end for Henry. They alternate, and the pro scouts say that both of them are in the top 10 of all tight ends in college football not a bad tandem to have. Walsh does not have the gun that Kozar had or any of the other Miami quarterback stars, but he's very smart. And he wants to throw on first down. Throws under an incomplete intended for Alfredo Roberts' his tight end, Eric Witted, the closest man on coverage for Arkansas. Let's take a look at that Razorback defense. The interior of the defensive line, Cherico is an All-American at the nose guard. The outside linebackers, Kerry Owens, number 54, and Albert Harris, number 68. He also lines up as a defensive lineman. Eric Witted and Ricky Williams, the inside linebackers, both tough. The corners, Richard Brothers and Anthony Cooney. And we'll get the rest of the secondary in a minute. Listen to that crowd. Delay to Bratton. He's got a big hole. Melvin Bratton up to the 28-yard line. Brothers and Cherico in on the tackle for Arkansas. And there are the corners, Richard Brothers and Anthony Cooney. They really like Brothers. High school track star and the safeties. Atwater is as good as it gets, along with Otis Lloyd, number 36. Third down, two yards to go. Miami with the ball of its own, 28-yard line. to throw. Throws under incomplete. In and out of the hands of Alfredo Roberts. A little low for him. Atwater on the coverage and Arkansas has held on its first possession. The Arkansas team loves to play in Little Rock. The fans go crazy. There's John Bland deep to receive the punt. He's back there because Tim Horton is injured. The normal punt returner and Jeff Beagles, who gets it away very quickly, is here to punt. Spirals one out of there. And it takes an Arkansas bounce and will be downed near midfield. So a great, black, great break for the Razorbacks after a kick of only 26 yards. Jimmy Johnson on the sideline, and he will have to have his defense stop this man, Greg Thomas, the senior quarterback who runs the flex bone offense. He can give it off to one of three guys. Johnson and Rouse, the halfbacks. Sammy Van Dyke, the senior fullback. The receivers, Donnie Center, the lone wideout, and Billy Winston, the tight end. He's a good one. The tackles, Jones at 289, Beckett at 272. The interior line is awesome. Stitton and Childress combined, 652 pounds. Brian White, the center at 288. The option, the pitch back goes to Rouse, and Rouse across midfield into Miami territory to the 44. Knocked down by free safety, Benny Blaze. The defensive ends for Miami. Stubbs is an All-American. The tackles, Greg Bark, normally a backup defensive end, is starting at one tackle along with Derwin Jones. The linebackers, Myra in the middle, will soon be the all-time tackler for this club. The secondary is as good as it gets. Donald Ellis and Tolbert Bain. Benny Blades and Selwyn Brown are the safety. Blades, an All-American. Second and a yard to go. And they give it to Van Dyke. Looks like he has the first down at the Miami 42-yard line. George Myra on the tackle. Myra's one of those guys who they said when he came in and first started, he doesn't have any talent at all. They keep looking for somebody to replace him. He is going to be the number one tackler of all time for this club. He is one of the examples of somebody who might not be able to play pro ball, but is a great college player. He's got a great heart. That's what's making him a great player. And the pitch back. 
to the 31 yard line. First down, Arkansas. Benny Blades had to make the stop from the safety position again. Well, you get a chance to watch a triple angle from a low angle. Watch a quarterback, Thomas, as he comes down, he reads the fullback, Van Dyke number 21, he pitches the 35 Rouse. Now, from this point on, watch him drop his shoulder and go forward. What's happening right now, Miami is confused because they've been running to the short field Arkansas has. They expect him to go the other way to the wide field. Rouse, two carries, 21 yards. This is Johnson inside the 30 to about the 29. Rouse missed all but two games in 1986. As a freshman, he had nine touchdowns. He has 13 for his career. Johnson has 14 career touchdowns, quite a pair. They're, they're outstanding runners, but most important, to make the wishbone go, you gotta have good blockers at those backs, and that's why, those, that's why the wishbone goes. They can block. Keep an eye on the guards, those huge Arkansas guards. They have to do the job on the Miami tackles, and this is an exceptional Miami defense. Rouse again. Once again to the short side of the field, inside the 30. They'll mark it at the 26. Greg Mark, the defensive end, made the tackle once again to the short side. Exactly. What Miami's doing, they're taking away the wide field, or the most of the field is to the, their left. They're overshifting the line, and Arkansas is coming up and automatically the option, whichever way Miami is loaded, they go the opposite way. Jimmy Johnson, throughout his career as an assistant and a head coach, has been a tremendous defensive coach. He has coached some of the best defensive lines in college football history, including Oklahoma and Pittsburgh. Thomas, quarterback draw, and they've got him. Greg Mark cut in in a hurry and made the tackle. But I like the quarterback draw on third down and long yardage because Miami has a tendency sometimes to play man-for-man -man coverage, and if the quarterback can break one tackle, boom, he goes all the way. Kendall Trainer is on to go for the field goal. He puts the tee down at the 32. It would be a 42-yard attempt. It would be his longest of the year. He has missed from 51 and hit four shorter than that. It's long enough, but it's wide. And Miami gets a break early with 10.57 to go in the quarter. We're scoreless, Miami and Arkansas. It's being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Heil Heating and Cooling. Depend on Heil. They're born to run. 10.57 to go. First quarter of play, Miami with the football at its own 25-yard line after Arkansas comes up empty on a 42-yard field goal after a pretty good drive. They showed they could move the ball. They had good field position, and they moved it on the option. Miami's making some adjustments on the sideline right now defensively. They'll go out of the eye this time. Williams, the deep man, and he'll get the ball. Williams gets a couple. Eric Witt at number 39 was in on the tackle. Miami has a tendency to run out of the eye formation, and why they do that is because that's their best running formation. When they split the backfield, it's more difficult to run, but it's better to get the backs out in their five-man professional-style passing attack. Second down and six. As Williams, who does not make a lot of mistakes as a back for Miami, got four. Bradley. Got to the 31, and that swarming Arkansas defense, and right in the middle of that pile, as always, Tony Cherico, along with Witted. You notice number 51, the Chad Rowland. Rowland will uh, alternate at a right tackle with Tony Allison. You notice the Miami coaches changed the strategy right away. They featured Walsh throwing the ball early, not had taken down this, and, and kept the pressure off him a little bit, and give it to the big running backs and let them start the game going again. Against Florida, Bratton carried eight times, only made four yards. It's third and three right now. And Walsh to throw. Likes the short patterns and completes it out there to Brian Blades. And Blades has the first down and a little extra activity with Anthony Cooney, the corner. That's the pass they want to throw. They like to throw the out cuts, and there's some scores for you to look at while we're talking. They like the out cut because it's a safe pass. It's a nice pass, and it gets the quarterback's confidence up. And Walsh, as we told you, does not have the great arm that uh, Kelly Kozar or Testa Verde had. Quarterback you started when George Myra played in Miami. First and ten teams. Everybody on the offensive line jumped except center Rod Holder, and Walsh has to cover up. 
Walsh falls on the football. There are flags on the play. And it is procedure against the Hurricanes. That's Paul Schmidt, the referee today. A split officiating crew, the Southern Independents and the Southwest Conference. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure against the Hurricanes. Five yards. First down and 15. That'll happen sometime when there, there's a lot of crowd noise. The quarterback might think, the center might think it's on two and snaps it on two, but it's really gone already. First and 15 for the Hurricanes at their own 35. Walsh goes short and complete out of the backfield. Warren Williams covered by Eric Witted. And that's the kind of defense Arkansas wants to play. They'll let him catch the short stuff in front of them. The one thing we might watch for, Lee, is that Arkansas does not have much of a pass rush. And Wayne Martin, the defensive tackle, was their best pass rusher, and he's out with an injury. What they're going to have to do then, if they don't have a good pass rush from four, they're going to have to send six or seven, and that could open up Miami for a long touchdown pass. Especially with Blades and Irvin. It's second and nine after a game of six on that play. Here comes the blitz. Williams avoids a tackle. Cherico missed him. He gets the midfield. Great move by Warren Williams down to the Arkansas 45-yard line. A 15-yard run and a couple of great-looking moves from Warren Williams. Uh, he made this one all on himself. Richard this is a counteraction play. Williams Watch. They'll start the one way and come back First to the left. Miami. Now, the outside man misses him, but right now he runs into his own man. Now, Williams is doing something good fundamentally. He's carrying the ball in his left hand so that he can use his other hand as a weapon. Watch. Good movement down. 29. Cooley gets down there. A nice play by Warren by Warren Williams, number 24. First time Miami has had it in Arkansas territory. Bratton on the delay. And Tony Cherico got him with one hand and brought him down. Cherico, a nose guard, 242. That's the biggest he's ever been, but he's just so quick he can play that spot. Oh, Cherico, so, some football player, like you said. The one thing I like about Cherico, he makes penetration, which means he's in the other side of the backfield. See what I'm talking about? He did that by a little stunt. He holves on and does a great job there. He's from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Tell you what, you have to have very strong hands. Bratton is 223. He was prone and just pulled him down with his left hand. Second and eight, Miami. Bratton again. Inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. He'll be three shy of a first down. Eric Witted again in on this time. Cherico was also there. Witted and Williams, the David linebackers, Schell 39 and 57 respectively, the leading tacklers. You gotta, you gotta really like what Miami's doing right now. They're featuring number 24 Williams and number five Bratton, not number four Walsh, which is smart because those two guys are better than football players. Third and three. The crowd exhorting the defense to hold. Walsh complete to his tight end, Alfredo Roberts. And where they have marked it, he is going to be about half a yard shy or less than that of a first down. Now you watch a secondary drop, and what Walsh does here, he avoids the rush, but they notice. Now they'll have all the secondary people, number nine, the brothers in there, number 27, Atwater, they've got everybody in front of them, and they come up and make the tackle and drive them to the outside. It's fourth down. Now Miami likes to do this. Number five, Bratton, over the top. That's well, that their was, favorite. Play. That was an interesting spot on that because Alfredo Roberts was across the 35-yard line when he was hit. They'll go for it on fourth and one. They did not give him his forward progress. Bratton. First down, Miami. Witted and Atwater were the first two there. Atwater had a broken collarbone in the spring. He's an excellent safety. Now, this is their favorite play because Bratton is their biggest, strongest runner. 6'1", 223, and he does it the best of anybody. Now, remember, I told you they were going to run that play, but they do it so well that they don't care. They'll call the other team up and say, hey, we're going to run this play. Try to stop us. That's the way you win football games. Running the ball when you tell the other team you're going to run it. First and 10 canes at the Arkansas 34. For the first time, they go deep, and it's dropped by Blades. Got his hands on it. It may have been tipped by Kerry Owens. 
Oh, that's a, this is almost a touch in. Now, Blades is isolated on this when you get a chance to watch it, but watch number 54, Owens, who's an outside linebacker at 222 pounds trying to cover him deep, and number 28, Cooley, comes over. Number 54, Owens, slightly cuts that football, and Blades almost made the catch on it. Blades averages almost 18 yards a catch for his career, and that wasn't Walsh's fault. That was right on the money. Second and 10. No pressure at all. Wanted to throw the screen, now dumps it off to his tight end, Roberts, and Roberts is wrapped up at the 31-yard line. It looked like he was trying to set up the screen, and Arkansas didn't have a big enough pass rush to bite on it. You know what? Jericho, number 64, was over there covering Bratton, Bratton five man-to-man. -man. I've never seen that before. That was a great call on the defensive staff by Arkansas because they must have had a tendency that in that down and distance they like to screen. Keep you up to date on all the scores throughout the afternoon. Andre Brown, number 83, is in as a wide receiver as Miami goes with three wideouts on third and seven. Three-man rush on Walsh. And over the middle, he's got Irvin. Irvin inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Steve Atwater on the coverage, but it's a 19-yard game. And Walsh, for not having all the advanced publicity, certainly puts the ball on the money. What a shot. That drilled him right between the numbers. Now watch, he gets good protection. Now I like this, the way he threw off his foot, foot and followed through. Now there's nobody. They were trying to play Atwater 27 on 47 Irvin. Forget it. There's nobody in college football that can cover 47 Irvin man for man. Nobody. I mean nobody. He is a great one. The all-time leading receiver for touchdowns and yards. Bretton. He'll get to the 10. Knocked down by Otis Lloyd and ridden down by Albert Harris, number 68 behind him. Albert Harris. Make it seven and about eight. Bratton so far, six carries, 22 yards. His backfield coach, Joe Brodsky, says he is the most frustrating experience he has ever had as a coach. He thinks Bratton has all the talent there is and just doesn't go hard all the time, especially in practice. Williams, big hole, to about the two. And that'll be very close to another Miami first down. Atwater again on the stop along with Ricky Williams. Well, Williams makes a good cut here, but I'll tell you what, 76 Proven and 71 Patchen on the right side get good blocking angles. They block 98 Shepard right out of the play and drives forward. Williams does, and he runs over number 27 Atwater, who Atwater, they say in the pros, scouts say, is the best tackling safety in America, and Williams got lower than he did and drove for that extra yard. And it's first and goal, Miami. And a fast-moving first quarter. We're already down to four minutes and 18 seconds to go in the scoreless game. Now, Miami's tendency down here is to give the ball to number five, Bratton, on some kind of a belly lead play or watch for a naked kind of a quarterback bootleg and or they like to throw a little lob pass in the corner. Two tight ends, Henry 82 and Roberts 87 are in the ball game. And Irvin on a win. And it looks like Walsh is changing the play. Williams. Touchdown, Miami. Didn't get in by much, but then you don't have to. And let me tell you what a great call that was. You know those three things I said Miami likes to do? Arkansas knew that, too. So they shifted the line over to my tendency call. Miami ran the ball the other way for a first down and a touchdown because that was an automatic by Walsh. Great petty play by the quarterback. Great right call time. by Walsh. Greg Potts will come on for the point after. Fagels is his holder. And Willis Pegues. Excuse me, Mike Pigza, the long snapper. And Cox comes through for the extra point. And okay, 7 nothing Hurricanes. I know. You watch this. The formation is goes, looks like it's going to go to the right, but here comes Williams. And he's running behind number 79, Sullivan, and number 75, O'Neal. I call that the Irish left side. Two Irishmen over there, and they blew the ball off, but it was an automatic by Walsh on the goal line. Great call by Walsh. Timeout first quarter, 7 nothing Hurricanes. 
And we'll keep you up to date on all the uh, strike happenings on the exclusive Suey Pig Network. I think we have a new name. That's not a bad one to have either. Edgar Bennis is on to kick off. And deep to receive Donnie Centers. Centers from the four. Guy can fly. Avoided a couple of tackles and got it out to the 24-yard line. Fine effort by Donnie Centers. And Miami very impressive on that drive. They went 75 yards and they ate up a lot of clock. Over seven minutes. Williams capped it off with a two-yard run for a 7-0 lead. He also went for fourth down once on it. Made a good play. Centers is limping off. He is the starting split end. And Derek Russell, number two, is checked in in his place. And they'll attend to the centers on the sideline. One guy they certainly can't afford to lose. Last year, he averaged 28 yards a catch. They'll go to the air for the first time, and they complete it to Russell. Russell flattened back there. Donald Ellis, number 29 on the stop. But a nice throw by Greg Thomas. And we wanted to make the point that if you get behind in a wishbone, you're in trouble. But this is the flex bone as opposed to the wishbone, and it's a little different. Absolutely. What they'll do is they'll put the backs up on wing back position so they can get them out in the pass patterns quicker. It's more flexible. That's why it's got the name, the flex bone. And it's a first and ten. And they'll go with Rouse on the quick hitting play this time. And Rouse really stuffed at the line of scrimmage by 91 Rod Carter. Donnie centers on the sideline. Looked like it was his right leg that was bothering him. Russell comes back to the ball game. Second and nine. Reverse pivot. They get it back to Johnson. Van Dyke with a good block in front of him. And Johnson will pick up some good yardage. Nice block by the fullback, Sammy Van Dyke, out there on the corner. Okay, now this is a little bit of this is a little different kind of an option play. It's kind of a reverse action, and and it really happens in this play. The quarterback does a little spin, and he comes down and freezes the linebackers, especially number four, 45, Myra. He looked like he was screwed into the ground. He didn't know which way to go that way. Thomas did not play last week in Arkansas's 30 to 15 win over Tulsa. He suffered a bruised sternum in the first game, and they thought they could afford to rest him last week. They played back up quarterback Quinn Roby, and it worked out very well, and Thomas Healthy able to play again. He wants to throw this time, dumped it off for Johnson, and coming up quickly from the secondary was Selwyn Brown, number 32. Even if Johnson makes the catch, the play isn't going to go anywhere, and it brings up a fourth and three. Well, I tell you what, you're a good running team. It's third down and three, and you throw kind of a flare pass, and you're not used to that. I would say right now, on a scale of one to ten, that was about a call of three. Very, very poor call in that situation, especially when you're running the option so well. That's Cleveland Gary, who's deep to receive. Kendall Trainer, the place kicker, is also the punter this year. He's averaged almost 42 yards a kick. Miami with nine men on the line, and they come. And he just got it out of there. What a beauty. Holy cow, what a punt. And they'll take it out of the end zone. Cleveland Gary really made a big mistake. Tony Holmes made the tackle. And why, oh, why did Cleveland Gary do that? Okay, the first thing he made a mistake is when you get a punt receiver back there, you put your heels on the 10-yard line. You never get inside the 10, and you tell them, if the ball is over your head, let it go. My gosh, what a mistake here. And Tony Holmes, number 26, and that's exactly what Jimmy Johnson's telling him. Nice try, but don't do it again. 2.27 to go in the quarter, still 7-0. There's the young man, Cleveland Gary, who made the mistake on that last punt, backed up into his own end zone, caught it, and then tried to take it out. Miami's offense has been very good in the first quarter. Walsh, 5 out of 8, 38 yards. They've also had an excellent ground game. Walsh changing the play at the line again. Very smart quarterback. Throws the quick out to Irvin, completed the 15-yard line. Brothers was there, but too late. 
and you have to really be impressed with Walsh under this kind of pressure in this hostile environment, and he has changed the play at the line of scrimmage several times and made every one work. And the play he changed to is the most difficult pass to throw, an out 15, 12 yards deep. What a nice throw that time. That showed a lot of confidence in Walsh's ability to throw it. Gain of nine, second and one at the 14-yard line. Bratton and Williams in the eye, and now they'll shift out as Walsh changes the play again. This kid's got a lot of guts. He'll throw it from anywhere, and he's got Irvin down the middle. Irvin to the Arkansas 49-yard line, a 36-yard shot right on the money. What they did is that time they caught number 27 Atwater coming up to make a play, and there's Irvin running a post route. This, this guy, Irvin, was all world at Fort Lauderdale High School. Tell you what, Steve Walsh may not have a rifle arm, but right now I think any coach in the country would take exactly what he has. Three automatics, three great plays. First and ten for Miami at the Arkansas 49. Big hole. First down and more. What a great cut. He might go all the way. Williams touch down Miami. A 49-yard scramble by Warren Williams and their Hurricanes have stunned a sellout crowd here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Boy, he made a nice move. He gets the ball deep in the backfield. He runs the daylight. Remember I told you the way to take a great back and find out how good he is is how many yards he makes after he gets hit. Oh, what a fine football player Warren Williams is. 49 yards. Fiegels to hold for Cox. And Cox bangs it through. So Miami strikes in a hurry. Now get the ball deep, Williams does, and watch the offensive right line, right side, 76 Proven, 71 Patch. He gets a good block by Bratton, number five, but I want you to watch 47 Irvin come out of the corner of your picture and make a great block right down here. The same guy right there, 47, that caught the long pass. Watch him make the block that gives his friend Williams a touchdown. Now, that's an All-American block plus a great receiver. 1.14 to go first quarter. Miami jumps on top. 14 nothing. It's here in the first quarter. And he has to do something about it. Edgar Bennis should kick off to his opposite number one, Donnie Centers, standing at the goal line. Like to pin him in the corner if they can, and Centers just come from the six. Across the 25 to the 27, about the 28-yard line. That scoring drive, 95 yards, and Williams got half of it with that 49-yard run. And Steve Walsh was brilliant in that drive, checking off the line of scrimmage a couple of times and getting big plays out of it. Warren Williams after that 49-yard touchdown run, and it's 14-0. And let's see what Arkansas, under Greg Thomas on offense, can do. on the wings. And they'll give it straight ahead to Van Dyke. And Van Dyke is really blasted by Rod Carter, the junior linebacker out of Fort Lauderdale. Here's some other scores for you to keep up to date at half. Colorado leading Washington State. California, the Bears over USC. San Diego State with a lead in the first quarter over Oregon. Air Force rolling along over Colorado State. Iowa State, Wyoming, 17-17. See if you can pick out your favorite team as we run through the rest of the scores for you, and we'll continually update you throughout the rest of the afternoon. Second and nine. Arkansas needs yardage from its fullbacks on their play, and so far they're not getting it. Thomas has to keep it. Could not get the ball to Rouse as Miami covered it brilliantly at the 30-yard line. From the inside out comes 45, George Meyer Jr. from Miami, Florida, Palmetto High School. Watch him. He's the middle in linebacker. He reads the quarterback. He's got to run inside out now, ladies and gentlemen, so the quarterback can't cut back. Boom. Nice tackle. George Myra Jr. Jr. And boy, could his did his dad have a rifle. 
going to be third and eight. They are going to let the first quarter clock run out as you see the rushing yardage in the first period. And that is the end of the first period here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. And it's a 14 point hurricane lead. Arkansas really needs to do something on offense to get this crowd back in the ball game because it is such an advantage for them with a sellout of 53,250. But the crowd has not had much of anything to cheer about. It's third and eight right now. Thomas, one out of two, may have to throw. They run the option instead, and forget it. George Myra was in the backfield as quickly as any of the Arkansas running backs, and he made the stop, brings up fourth and long. What they did that time was the first blitz that they called all day. Watch Myra, number 45. It's the first blitz from the inside. He makes a good play and gets to Thomas before he can run the option play. Miami is a well-coached and have got some fine athletes, and they're playing a top of their game right now. Kendall Trainer is on to punt Cleveland Gary, who made a mistake that didn't cost them anything. He's back to receive his own 35. Trainer, a high, spiraling kick this time. And it bounces out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Here's some other scores for you from around the rest of the country. North Carolina with only that loss to Oklahoma, winning big. Lafayette, a 31-point win. Cordy Lockbaum must have had a big game today as Holy Cross rolls. Army over Citadel, that's a fourth-quarter score. East Carolina had to come from behind to beat Georgia Southern. And Iowa over Kansas State. Kansas State was leading in that ballgame. Would have been a major upset. Miami first and 10 at its own 43. Williams. Excuse me, Leonard Conley in the ball game. The backup halfback, a freshman out of Holiday, Florida, at 170 pounds. Williams getting a rest after ripping off 49 yards for a touchdown. David Shell made the tackle for that Arkansas defensive line. To win on the road, most football teams and coaches believe you got to get ahead by at least 14 to get the crowd out of it, then hold on in there as the home team comes back and tries to beat you 17-14. Conley's first carry of the year. Cleveland Gary is in the fullback. Walsh with plenty of time and throws incomplete to Cleveland Gary. Otis Lloyd was coming up to cover. Uh, Coach, the one thing that Arkansas was going to do was allow the short passes, but that is Walsh's strength. Well, I tell you, another thing that's happened, not only have they had thrown the ball straighter, I think he's thrown the ball straighter than they ever thought he could throw it. There is a very competitive young man at number one, at four walls. He wants to complete every pass. Well, he's almost done that. Seven out of 11 for 83 yards. He's had a couple drops. Third and eight right now. No pressure at all. Walsh with all the time in the world. Throws complete to Henry. His tight end. He's out of bounds at the Arkansas 35. And if they allow Walsh to stand back there, he's going to complete 75% of his passes all day long. Not only that, he got great pass protection, but he threw that ball to Harry. Henry, number 82, right between the defenders. Number nine, Brothers, was over there. And watch him lay it in between everybody. 36 was over there Lloyd, but it was a perfect pass because he just took enough off of it to lay it smack right in the hands of Henry. Picking that zone apart right now, and Miami driving for a third score. Excellent effort by Conley. Broke a couple of tackles, picked up about six yards down to the Arkansas 29. Lloyd and Ricky Williams made the stop. The thing that impresses me about Miami right now, you really have no idea where they're going to attack you. They throw it, they run it, they throw it over short, they throw it wide, they throw a little screen before, they run the ball. They've got a nice balanced attack, and that's the secret to moving the football. And of course, they had almost no rushing success at all in their opener against Florida, but they're having all kinds today. And they really beat up a good Florida football team. Delay to Gary. And Gary dragged down from behind by Witted as he got to the 26-yard line. Crowd wanted to fumble, but the ball was obviously down. That was a nice little draw play. They've been using Walsh, been using Walsh, and all of a sudden they came back, used him as bait, and gave the ball to Cleveland Gary right there. Gary is out of Indian Town, Florida. He was a parade high school All-American, went to Georgia, transferred from Georgia before his sophomore year, and here is another guy that they feel has tremendous potential and has not shown it as yet. 
30 yard right now. Andre Brown comes into the wide receiver spot. He's number 83. And Walsh with all day again drills it to Henry as tight end. First down and more to the Arkansas 16-yard line. Eric Witt had made the tackle, and Steve Walsh looks like he's a senior instead of a sophomore and looks like he is perfectly in the mold of all those great quarterbacks. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator, calls the plays from upside. He's got Arkansas. They have no idea. That was third down and one, and he threw a little hook pass for four and got a first down. They have no idea where Miami's going to attack him the next time. But that's just great calls from Gary Stevens from upstairs. Walsh has been exceptional. Nine out of 13, 115 yards in the first half alone. Conley bouncing off tacklers will not go down until he reaches the 16-yard line. Remember, this kid is only 170 pounds, and he's just very tough. With it again on the tackle, along with Reggie Hall, number 49, backup linebacker. One of the things that might happen now, Arkansas is going to be forced to put the pressure on. They're going to have to blitz, and when they do, it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with number nine, Glades and number 47, Irvin, and goodbye. Well, it couldn't be much worse than what's happening to them right now. You got it. Second and nine. They'll go to Conley on the toss. Got a nice block from Gary. Touchdown, Miami. <laughs> Leonard Conley with his first touchdown as a college player. And it was a beauty. And Ken Hatfield just has to be dejected on that Arkansas sideline. This is a defense they're very proud of and has been shredded for three first half touchdowns. Cox comes on to try for the 21st point out of Fiegel's hold. He's got it. <laughs> Well, Conley, number 28, just gets a good block from 43. Watch him. Gary makes a good block. But Miami did that time, Mike. They had an unbalanced line. But I'll tell you what, unbalanced doesn't make any difference. When you're fast as 28 is, Conley, forget it. Great block on that play by center Rod Holder, who got two people. Timeout. It's 21-0. Live CFA football is brought to you by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Miami leading Arkansas 21-0 here in Little Rock. A stunning quarter and a couple of minutes of football as the Hurricanes have just been absolutely devastating. Donnie Centers driven eight yards deep in the end zone. It goes out of bounds, and Arkansas will have to start from its own 20. Another look at a touchdown. I'll show you Conley, number 28, making his break to the outside. Now watch. Good block by number 76, Proven. Patchen gets a good block, 43. Gary does. But watch right here in the right-hand picture. You'll see Brothers come in at number six. He's one of their fastest men on their team, and he cannot even come close to tagging Conley, number 28. They've got too much speed, quickness, and their athletic ability is unbelievable right at this point. They need more hogs out there. 43 yards in total offense so far for Arkansas. Miami has racked up 241. Thomas on the option. They've got it covered rather well. He'll pick up about five. And brought down by Benny Blades, the free safety. Blaze is just a great player, and this secondary may be the best in the country as you take a look at some other scores. Indiana, a winner over Missouri. Northern Illinois, surprising Northwestern. That's a third quarter score. Wisconsin with a touchdown lead. Kansas trailing Louisiana Tech, and boy, is it tough times in Kansas. Thomas, one out of two so far this afternoon, only 11 yards. And Arkansas has to do something to get its offense moving. Thomas looking to throw. Near side, overthrows centers. Ellis was on the coverage for Miami, but the ball was simply overthrown. If you are an Arkansas offensive coach, what do you tell this unit right now? Well, the first thing you do is second down and long. You don't throw the ball because if it's incomplete, it's third down, and then Miami goes, whoosh, they come right after you. So what Miami has to do is continue to pressure on. What Arkansas has to do is not try to catch him so quick. They've got to try to catch him on defense, move the ball, kick a field goal, stay close to the game, and get the crowd back in there. Can I hear that sound effect again, that, uh, <laughs> that rush? That was good. Third and five. Intercepted. It's picked 
picked off by Selwyn Brown. And Selwyn Brown is down to the Arkansas one-yard line. He just put the hands up there, standing right in the passing lane, and picked it off. Well, Brown is 5'11", 200-pound senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. What he did is he dropped underneath the pass that was thrown before. Now watch. Thomas comes down and runs a play-action pass on third and eight, and not one of the Miami guys played the run. And there's Thomas. Boy, I remember 32, Brown just takes off down the sideline, gets a good block down there by 63, Jimmy Jones, and he goes in for a touchdown. Missed most oh, no, of 1986. He was an honorable mention All-American as a sophomore. And this is a brilliant secondary for the Hurricane. They can almost put this game away here. Bratton and Williams are back in. First and goal with the one. Bratton. Touchdown, Miami. Holy cow. The Hurricanes have done absolutely nothing wrong here in the first half, and they are just burying Arkansas. They've done nothing wrong, and psychologically and every other way, they're at the top of their game. And remember, they haven't played in two weeks. They missed two weeks. Yeah. Can you imagine what this football team's going to look like when they start getting ready? It's, if it's any better than this, nobody wants to see it. They can play on Sundays. <laughs> That's right. Nobody else is. Cox is on for his fourth PAT of the first half. He's perfect. Now, you know, Bratton, number five, we talked about the way he likes to get across and jump. Now, watch. He gets the ball nice and deep. He leaps, and all he has to do is get any part of that football across the plane. It's a touchdown. There's a timeout in the second quarter. 10-10 to go in the period. 28-0 Miami. Hope you'll join us Thursday night for Long Beach State and Fresno State. Right now, we're in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the Razorbacks are absolutely Edgar stunned Bennett. as Miami has taken a 28-0 lead. This is number seven against number 10, but you wouldn't know it from looking at the scoreboard. Donnie Centers, once again, driven deep in the end zone, and Arkansas will have to start from its own 20-yard line. Arkansas 20-yard line. Now, these people had this place rocking when the game started. And right now, there is not a lot of noise coming from 53,250. But they don't give up in Arkansas. They'll come back, and they'll try to come back. And if, if I was a coach of Arkansas, what I'd do right now is try to get back with a change. And there it is right now, a change in quarterback. Because what do you got to lose? You might as well bring the young kid in and see what he can do. do Red Groovy. shirt freshman Quinn Grovey from Duncan, Oklahoma, who played nearly the entire game a week ago, is in at quarterback. There he is, number four. He runs a 4-5, and he may need that speed. Groby on the option, nowhere to go. And he'll lose a yard on his first carry. And now there's a flag down for a late hit. Daniel Stubbs really upset about it. He's the All-American defensive end, number 96. And if it is a personal foul, that's the one of the best offensive plays Arkansas has had today. Watch number 96 come in here and spear him oh. right there in the back of the helmet. Now, oh, that was only about three seconds late, wasn't it? Well, you know, one of the but things geez. that you, yeah, I know there's, there's a difference between really dramming him in there, and that's one of the things that they do, and, and, and they try to do this in football. Dead ball, Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Personal foul. Late hit against the defense. Against Miami, 15 yards. They try to outlaw that because that's a dangerous play. This is Fred Goldsmith, the defensive coordinator, telling him, look, we got to get that back in this game on defense. The only way you're going to win this game, Mike, is you got to shut Miami out from right now. That's it. That's the only way you can win. Let's see if that personal foul penalty will fire up Arkansas a little bit. Johnson on the toss. He's hit in the backfield by Randy Shannon and Donald Ellis. Jim Johnson. Now, you know, Shannon hustled right. up. Yeah, and a pre pre-game show we talked about how I would attack the quarterback now watch number 96 stubs his responsibility is boom you flatten that guy don't worry about any options and you know what number four that's his play come down the line and run an option off the guy I used to run that play and I told the coach in the sideline coach there's no option they're killing me that's 250 pounds against 170 second and 11. 
Rose is being chased. Nowhere to go, and he's buried back at the 31, a hit by Rod Carter. Oh, man, is this team loaded with talent. I mean, they go right, and there goes Stubbs, number 96. They go left, and there's 91. Carter hits them. They've got talent all over. One of the things that impresses me about Miami is they made such a great adjustment. Remember how Arkansas came out of the game and started running the option, looked real good? Miami's made a nice adjustment. Now, Grovey will come out of the ball game on third and 13. Thomas is back in. I don't know. Grovey looked pretty excited to be in the ball game after those few plays. Maybe he, uh, maybe he's excited about coming out for a breather. And Thomas now wants a timeout to go over and to the Arkansas sideline and talk it over on third and 13. We have a timeout with 8:37 to go. First. You know, Miami must like to play on television. Since 1980, their record on television is 25 wins and five losses. It's some program that Jimmy Johnson has continued down there. Here comes the blitz on third and long. Arkansas picked it up for a second. Thomas got away a second time, and then he is absolutely buried back at the 21-yard line. Got some more scores for you. California continues to lead Southern Cal. That's second quarter. San Diego State leads Oregon. Air Force over Colorado State. That is now a final, 27-19. Iowa State, Wyoming tied in the third. This is Kendall Trainer on the punt. And deep to receive Cleveland Garrett. Arkansas has done absolutely nothing right. Trainer with a short, low kick. Takes a bounce, and Gary takes it on the first hop. And good kick coverage by Arkansas. They stop him at the Miami 42-yard line. 40-yard kick by Trainer. Here's some of the stats for you, and it really tells the whole story. Miami with 128 yards rushing, 115 more passing, two touchdown runs, and they have held Arkansas, that flex bone offense, to only 31 yards on the ground here in the first half. They held Florida to 31 yards on the ground. They just did a great job. Williams still on his feet across midfield in the Arkansas territory, 47-48 yard line. Albert Harris with the tackle. When does fatigue start to be a factor, Lee? Mentally, mentally. Arkansas is whipped right now. This doesn't have anything to do with Philly physically. They've come out, they thought they were going to win this ball game, but now they've been knocked down by a better team. A nice little play here by Williams, who cuts it inside. Good block by Bratton, and he gets going down. Number 68 makes the tackle. But I tell you what, Harris made a good play there, but what happens, Arkansas is just stunned. That's what's their problem. They're stunned. I think you're right about that. Andre Brown, number 83, in at a wide receiver spot. Bratton and Williams to the backs. This is Bratton. Cuts it out to the right side. 40, 35, 30. Brothers chased him out of bounds, but Miami is just devastating this Arkansas defense. I mean, just watch this number five. Number five just comes into the inside. Bratton, this play is supposed to go to the inside, but watch it come to the outside. Watch Jericho, number 64. He gets blocked. Sullivan blocks him, number 79, and he gets to the outside. But the speed and quickness of the entire Miami team was the most impressive thing. Jericho's a fine football player, but they're running outside, throwing, and everything else. They got, they got them completely. Well, this is like coming downstairs on Christmas morning and the room's empty. Well, it's like coming downstairs and finding no room. <laughs> That's right. The family left. For the dead ball. Dead ball foul. The legal procedure. The legal procedure. The, the offense. The down lineman was moving. Finally, something goes right for Arkansas. This uh, procedure penalty will cost Miami five. Balls at the 35 yard line will be first and 15. And like you said earlier, these guys ought to yeah. be playing on Sundays. Bratton. Oh, what a huge hole. Down to the 21-yard line. They just didn't have a chance to stop him. He went 10 yards before anybody got a finger on him. That was a that was a quick trap. Now watch number 76 probing a pull to your left, and he goes to the opposite way. This is what they call a negative block. Wasn't that a terrific concept? And number 24 Williams cuts a, gets a good block. That play was designed for a good coach team to move that way, and he went right to the other way. What a terrific play. 
Kerry Owens finally got a hand on him, and Melvin Bratton has gone over the 1,000-yard mark in his career at the University of Miami. They are just shy of the first down. 7.05 to go in the first half. If you just joined us, you have missed four Hurricane first-half touchdowns, and they have done it on the air and on the ground, and their defense has been nearly perfect after the opening series. Bratton, 54 yards on the ground. Williams has carried six times for 87. Walsh has passed 9 out of 13 for 115 yards. You couldn't ask your offense to do any more than that. Second and a yard here. They'll shift out of the eye as Walsh changes the play again. And he wants to throw. Throwing for Irvin. Touchdown, Hurricanes! Steve Walsh has been absolutely perfect changing plays at the line of scrimmage. That's time he saw something on second and one, went for the post pattern, and hit Walsh right on the number. You know what he saw? He saw number 21, Steve Atwater, that great defensive back, move up like a linebacker. The open middle, oh, he automatic, number 47, Irvin, against number nine, Brooke. Brothers, and he just, right there. <laughs> Cox is on to try another point after, and again, he is good. And when they flash these scores up around the country, people won't believe it. Okay, he sees it's man for man. Watch him, he fakes to the outside, and, he, and drives number nine to the outside, and, and Irvin makes a good catch on number nine brothers. But now, this is what happened. Walsh, the quarterback, saw. Before the snap, he saw no safety man. He came back, looked off the one back, through right there for a touchdown. The kid is impressive. There's no question in my mind. He is a third-year sophomore who has changed at least four plays at the line of scrimmage, and they have all gone for big yardage. Back in a moment. Over the Razorbacks, 35 to nothing, and those people are smiling because there's a television camera pointed at them, not because they've looked at the scoreboard. Donnie centers, five, six yards deep. He'll down it, and Arkansas, once again, will have to start from its own 20. Now, here's the automatic we were talking about. Watch him. Now, as he comes up, he sees no safety man. Now, watch his left hand. Not only does he call the signal to, for the safety, but he gives him the five, which means run the post route. That's because if there's a loud crowd noise, the guy, the receiver, Urban, looked inside and saw his hand down and knew he run the post. Walsh has simply been exceptional in the first half. And Miami as a team has been that way, obviously, with a 35-0 lead over undefeated and 10th-ranked Arkansas. This is Quinn Groby, the redshirt freshman, who's back in at quarterback. He'll try to run the option. Back to Rouse on the toss. And Rouse will only get a couple wrapped up in a hurry. Randy Shannon, number 22, was in on the stop, along with Bubba McDowell, number 48, who's in there at a corner. Final, North Carolina wins big over Navy. Tough times in Annapolis this year. Pittsburgh in a defensive struggle at Morgantown beats West Virginia. Bucknell over Penn. Colgate, a 24-point winner against Cornell. And we'll update you on uh, the rest of the high Ivy League scores and scores in the Northeast as we go along, as well as the rest of college football. Our story here, six minutes and nine seconds to go. Uh, you saw the Holy Cross score. Gordy Lockbaum had a couple of touchdowns. Grovey on the option, out to Brothers. Out to the 31, excuse me, Donnie Centers. And listen to that cheer. Now that's a little derisive, that's, part of that's got to be derisive and part of it's got to try to get this team back in here. Listen, that happened to me once when I was at, at Maryland. We went to play Syracuse and in the fourth quarter, we got a first down, they gave us a standing ovation. <laughs> it's the only one we got all day. I know who I had for your field. First and 10, Arkansas at the 32. First completion for Grovey. Johnson, maybe a yard, no more. And George Myra and Rod Carter made the stop. Carter has been very impressive in the first half with some big hits. Now watch White, number 50, isolated on Myra. Watch him. Now he's a big, strong guy. He slips inside. White doesn't keep his head up. And Myra slips in and makes the tackle. The big linemen from, uh, from Arkansas are big and strong, but they're not quick enough for the Miami defensive line. 
The guards are 302 and 350. And they haven't been able to keep him out. Here's the loose ball. Grovey picks it up on the bounce. Trying to get back to the near side. And look at the Miami pursuit. They can run so well. Bubba McDowell over there on the coverage as the toss got away from Rouse. It's a loss of 18 yards on that play. Jimmy Jones, number 63, 6'4", 251, was chasing him. And I want you to watch. He comes on, makes a pitch out. It goes bad. Now, Rouse can't pick it up, so Roby picks it up. Now, watch. Number 63 coming into your picture. Number 48 comes into your picture. That's Bubba McDowell. Oh, the thing that impresses me most about Miami is, I tell you what, they got great pursuit, but they're well coached. They're always in the right position. Third and 28, Arkansas goes to two wideouts, puts the halfbacks on the wings. Here comes the rush. Grovey, quarterback draw. And he's horse-collared at the 18-yard line, Rod Carter. Just grabbed him around the throat and threw him down. But... But it was not a face mask. Now watch. Grovey will go back. He runs a quarterback draw. Number 91. Carter was in good football position and grabs around the neck and throws him down. But he did not do that now maliciously. I got to defend Carter on that one. Kendall Trainer has had the most work of any of the Arkansas players so far. Cleveland Gary is deep. Off the side of his foot. And will take a bounce. Gary has to let this one go, and the ball is down inside the Miami 40-yard line. There's a timeout with 4.12 to go first half. Miami continues to throw a shutout at Arkansas. Miami starting quarterback Steve Walsh now on the sideline. His day may be finished already in the second quarter. 10 out of 14, 136 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions, and a brilliantly called game. He changed several plays at the line of scrimmage. So they'll go with Craig Erickson, the freshman out of Atlantis, Florida. He's number seven at quarterback. And they've got the second team running backs in there, Conley and Gary. This is Cleveland Gary. Big hole, cuts it outside, gets to the 49-yard line, pulls to another first down. And the talent just keeps coming. There's Erickson, the freshman. He's only one out of two this year. One of the reasons they like Erickson, when Jeff George, the all-world quarterback from Purdue, said he was going to transfer to Miami, Erickson signed to Miami anyhow. Now, that's a guy that's got great confidence. It'll be second and one for the Hurricanes, and they've got the uh, several members of the backup offensive line in there, Gary Mahon, Barry Panful, and Darren Handy, number 66. Uh, Jimmy Johnson wants to give his reserves all the work they can in the same condition. Conley. First down to the Arkansas 48-yard line. Eric Witted on the stop. And the Arkansas sideline, not a happy place to be. And there's really almost nothing you can do as a coach to get them back up after the down 35 nothing second quarter. Not only that, there's still three minutes to go. You think you've been out here for a week and a half. Yeah. When you get beat like this, the game seems to go longer and longer. Three minutes, five seconds to go. Miami with the football at the 48 of Arkansas. Three wide receivers in the ball game. And Gary will pick. Got maybe one that time. Arkansas fans appreciative the fact that they were able to stop them for a couple plays in a row. Ricky Williams and Whitted again on the stop. Hatfield trying to fire up his club. Yeah, Hatfield's a graduate of the University of Arkansas. And he played on the championship team here in 1965. He's an outstanding man. He's got. A, he's a deeply religious person who believes in his faith, and he lives it. He's a good man, and he's a good football coach, and somebody we all should be proud of to have in his profession. Bratton is back in there on second and ten. Erickson to throw. Plenty of time. Throws to Henry, the tight end. 20, 17 yard line. Mark at the 19. And Erickson just laid it out there, and Henry went to get it. 29 yards on the reception. Did you like the way Erickson set up that time and hit? Henry on a breakout. Now, what happened on this game so far is it's very simple. The best football team is playing as well as they can. Now, watch Erickson. Sets up nicely, throws a spiral. They're beating number 27, Steve Atwater. That's the best they've got to offer. Henry makes the tackle, goes down the field, and number 26 makes the tackle and drives about a bounds to 36 Lloyd. But they could play 10 times, and Miami beat them at least nine. I don't think if you asked Arkansas to play him 10 times right now, they'd want to. 
Conley wrapped up by David Shell. He was one of the tackles who started in 1986. Lost the starting job to Michael Shepard this year, but he was in the uh, backfield in a hurry that time. Number, number 70, Schnell makes a good move. He comes outside. Now watch him in the lower left-hand part of your picture. He, he begs the tackle right there and comes across. He beat Ron Holder, number 64, to the, to the slanting side and made a good play. Second and 13 for the Hurricanes. Clock ticking down, 145 to go in the half. Delight of Conley. Cut it back down to the 15-yard line where Shell made the stop again. Conley, a good-looking freshman running back. Tim Brando coming up at halftime with all the scores and highlights from around the country. A couple of surprises for you today. You see the uh, game clock here in the second quarter, lower right-hand portion of your screen. Well, this is a day at the beach for a guy like Jimmy Johnson who expects a tough, tough ball game. Has a 35 nothing lead in the second quarter. Can play some of his second-team people, especially second-team quarterback. Erickson all day to throw, dumps it off to Henry, and Henry took a shot as he got down to about the 12-yard line. Carl Bradford, number 43, on the stop. Well, now, you know, Jimmy Johnson's an Arkansas graduate also, and he's got he's got a feeling for Ken Haskell. Yeah. They were teammates. Now, he doesn't want to beat him real bad, but he, he wants his team to play the best they can, so he's going to go for a field goal here. Watched Miami play against Florida, was tremendously impressed by the Hurricanes, especially on defense. Today, I have been impressed by both their offense and their defense. Greg Cox will try a 29-yard field goal. And just like everything else that has gone the Hurricanes' way, this does. And his field goal makes it 38-0 with 22 seconds to go in the first half. ESPN CFA coverage will continue next weekend. We have another exclusive doubleheader coming up for you. South Carolina barely lost to Georgia today against the second-ranked Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Lee and I will be in Lincoln for that one. Then our second game should be a beauty. 15th-ranked Florida against number four LSU. Our live coverage of that doubleheader starts at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. And you can start your day with ESPN's College Football Game Day, hosted by Tim Brando, Kerry Ross, and Bino Cook. Airtime, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Did you see the thing earlier today where Bino said he was going to get a vacation and uh, ESPN was buying him a plane ticket? They bought him one to Hartford and sent him back up to game day. <laughs> Some vacation. 38-0 Miami. What a shocker with 22 seconds to go in the first half. That's Donnie Centers, who has not had much of an opportunity to return kicks. He brought back the first one and appeared to suffer a leg injury on it. And since then, all of Venice kicks have been in the end zone. This one a low-line drive. Taken by one of the up men at the five-yard line. And Arkansas will not get it back to the 20. That was Barry Foster, the backup fullback. And flags are down after the play. We'll check the penalty for you. Here's Paul Schmidt, the referee. Of a dead ball. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Personal foul. Against the receiver. Against Arkansas. The first down, about 19. And this one goes against Arkansas. Watch yourself, 69 red. Paulskis gives him a little shot in the left hand. That's frustration coming out. Now, what Ken Hatfield's got to do right now is make sure that he gets his ball club and talks to him about the Southwest Conference. You know, this is a big ball game for it. Obviously, we're beaten today. But look, we got a long season. We can still go to the Cotton Bowl. We can come back and, and play for respect and dignity for Arkansas football in the second half because basically Miami's a better football team than they are and they don't want to play them anymore this year unless they have to. 15 seconds to go. Quinn Grovey is in at quarterback. You wouldn't think Arkansas would do anything down here. And Grovey will run the quarterback draw and get out across the 10 to about the 11-yard line. And they'll let the clock run down here at Little Rock. A stun. Sellout crowd in Little Rock, Arkansas has seen the 10th-ranked Razorbacks 
belittled in the first half to the tune of 38 to nothing by seventh ranked Miami. Some first half for the Hurricanes. To check up on all the scores and highlights, let's go back to our college football studio and Tim Brando. All right, Mike and Lee, thank you very much. Surprising indeed, at least in that score, already at halftime, the Miami Hurricanes with no problem. Now, coming up at halftime, we've got to tell you about a thriller in Knoxville, Tennessee, that has championship implications written all over it in the Southeastern Conference, a controversial play to close the game, a non-call. We'll have that, plus a plethora of highlights and scores from across the country from both top 20 and other key games. All of that coming up at halftime. Stay with us. What, 38 uh, nothing just starting the third quarter with two teams in the top ten. It's really been a shock. By the way, great job on the halftime show. Hope you'll watch Tim every week. Uh, we miss you out here on the sideline, but we appreciate the job you do in the studio. Arkansas kicks off to start the third quarter. Hill number three and Johnson 21 are deep. Johnson. Hill cuts in front of him. Takes it out of the end zone. He's got a room to run over the 30-yard line. 34-yard kickoff return. Richard Brothers knocked him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the possessions in the first half for the Hurricanes. If you're an Arkansas fan, you're only going to like the first one. Four plays and punt after that. Five consecutive drives for touchdowns to build a 35 to nothing lead. And then the last time they had the ball resulted in a field goal for a 38 nothing margin. That one that went 95 yards was yep. a thing of beauty. Walsh back in the quarterback, the sophomore who went out of the game early second quarter. Jimmy Johnson had to start his back in, and Walsh changing the play at the line of scrimmage again. He's been extremely successful every time he's done that. Throwing deep for Urban this time, it's overthrown Brothers and Cooney back there on the coverage. And it's the first time he's gone downfield all day that he wasn't right on target. It was the same automatic. He hit him for a touchdown. He, they. Arkansas has a, a tendency sometimes to move the safety up, number 27, Atwater, and when he does, he just calls a signal and throws it right over his head. So it's second and 10 for the Hurricanes from their own 30. Miami with 353 yards in total offense in the first half. They limited Arkansas to only 38 yards. The biggest statistic, the scoreboard, 38 nothing. This is Williams. Only get a couple this time. Cherico on the ground holding onto his ankle. Ricky Williams, number 57, also went on the tackle for the Razorbacks. And the halftime talk like this, Coach Hatfield's talking to the team about, look, you got to play for yourself, play for the pride of Arkansas football. He also looks at the fact that the next five ball games, Ole Miss, TCU, Texas Tech, Texas, and Houston, he can win and rice and come back here and go still go to the Cotton Bowl. He's not, he hadn't given up. He's a competitive man. Biggest game they have left, of course, uh, at least on paper, is Texas A&M, which could decide the conference crown. Third and seven right now for the Hurricanes. Three-man rush. No pressure. Walsh throws complete to Irvin. Irvin avoids one tackler, gets up to the 44-yard line. That's going to be a first down. Owens was in on the tackle along with Eric Witten. That time they tried to play number 54. Owens on there. You cannot play Owens 54, 6'2", on Irwin. There's no way. Now watch. Irvin tries to cover to the inside, and he can't cover him. There's no way, one-on-one. -on -one. But the beautiful part about that is that Walsh knew exactly which guy to throw it to, 47, Irvin. It's one of the problems with a three-deep secondary. You have to rely on those outside linebackers and defensive ends in your pass coverage. And against somebody like Irvin, it just isn't going to work very well. Whistle will stop it. I don't think they got that one off in time, and it will cost Miami five yards. How do you... Let's wait for the call. Here. Okay. And it is a delay against Miami. How would you compare, Lee, this Miami team that Jimmy Johnson has with last year's, which contended for the national title? They look they look every bit as good on defense. Walls today looks as good as Testaverde ever did. But I think one more thing that they've got, it looks like they've got more spirit and, and more of a business-like attitude. This morning in my meeting with Jimmy Johnson, he said the difference between this team and last year's, they're more serious, they're more business-like, they're really serious people about winning this national championship. Well, they've been serious about it today. 38 nothing. This is first and 15 now for Miami. Walsh for the first time feels a little pressure. Now 
Now he's going to run it. Chased him out of bounds, but he got back to the original line of scrimmage between the 43 and 44. Albert Harris chased him down. You know, when you talk about this young man, Ricky Walsh, you know, he's not just a normal guy. He was a, a prep All-American player in high school. He was a highly recruited player from St. Paul, Minnesota. He's the only player from the state of Minnesota to come to the University of Miami. Good place to come from if you don't like winter. Walsh so far, 11 out of 16, 146 yards. Irvin has caught five of those passes, 95 yards, and his 21st career touchdown. Second and nine. Bratton in motion. That is for Williams. And Williams wrapped up in the backfield by Ricky Williams. Chad Rowland, number 51, helped out, but Williams got in there in a hurry. You know, you know, Jimmy Johnson got criticized last year at the Fiesta Bowl because his team wore fatigues out there. Mm -hmm. One of the new things he's done is all of his players wear coats and ties on the road trips now, and he just feels that this team is more comfortable like that. They really want to do that, and that, that really speaks well of Coach Johnson. A lot of people have been criticized, criticized of his program, but let me tell you something. They've been to four consecutive New Year's Day bowl games, and only Nebraska can match that record. Third and nine. Three-man rush. No pressure at all. Walsh with all day to throw. Throws. Caught by Irvin at the sideline. He's got enough for the first down. Excuse me, Brian Blades. What a fine catch. And Walsh once again put it on the money. Did you notice the way he jumped up there and looked that ball right into his hand and caught it from his hands? Now watch. He sets up nice early. Uh, Walsh does. But watch Blades. Brian Blades go way up and concentrate on catching the football and bringing one foot in. Miami in its entire game is well coached fundamentally. Now that was a good fundamental play to catch it, look it in your hand, and bring one leg down. You were talking about Jimmy Johnson being proud. The other thing I know he's very proud of is the graduation rate he's got on this team now. He really improved that record. Walsh to Williams, and Williams down to the 40. Witted and Shell on the stop for Arkansas. Witted has been very, very busy today. You talked about that graduation. Jimmy Johnson has graduated. Last year's team, 73% of his team graduated, and that tripled the percentages before he came to the University of Miami. When People he took over after Howard Schnellenberger, the graduation rate was below double digits. That's incredible, and he's built it back up from there. Hurricanes of the Arkansas 40. Williams got away from Shell. Boy, he is a dandy-looking halfback. Steve Atwater made the stop about a yard shy of the first down. Albert Harris, number 68 there, is from Pimperton, New Jersey. He's a chemical engineering man. He made a nice play in there. He's an outstanding student. You wonder why a guy came from New Jersey back to play in Arkansas? Because he was born and raised here, and he left to go over there for just two years and come right back. 6'2", 228, a sophomore. Loping saves pesos. <laughs> Very inventive. Deserve it. Shook one tackle, tried to get away from two. Got away from Brothers initially and was knocked down at the 28-yard line. It appears to be a little shaken as Witted came over and popped him. Do you know that that was third down and about six inches? The quarterback comes up and throws a quick out. You know, you don't even do that in the NFL. First down. That tremendous execution by Walsh and Irvin. It's a, uh, a great offensive scheme they have in Miami. They will do anything. And it's first and ten. The Hurricanes driving already, leading 38 nothing. Crap. Cut it back. Witted was the first man to hit him. <laughs> And he stumbled with the rest of the Arkansas defense. But we told you at the beginning of the game that Arkansas felt to win. It had to hold on to the football and keep it away from Miami. They have not done it. It's been vice versa. Miami almost double in the time of possession over Arkansas. And you can't, with the weapons they've got, you can't allow them to do it. Out of the eye on second and six. Ten for Blades. Cooney on good coverage that time. There is a flag down, however, in the backfield. Otis Lloyd was coming on the blitz for Arkansas, one of the rare times that they have blitzed, and here's the call.
face mask against Miami. For the face mask, 15 yard face mask against the offense. 15 yards down. means that it was an intentional. Mm -hmm. That was if it's inadvertent, it's only a five yard. You have one of those uh, hog hats with you on this trip? I tell you what, if I did, I wouldn't wear it out of here. <laughs> I'm wearing my Miami hat. <laughs> Good choice. 38 nothing with 9.54 to go in the third quarter. I'd wear a Miami hat too. It's now second and 21 after the penalty marked off from the spot of the foul. It's back to the Arkansas 40 yard line. Here comes the blitz. Gets rid of it, and it's complete to Roberts, the tight end. Let's go to Tim Brando, an update on LSU and Ohio State. Tim. All right, Mike, thank you very much. The Tigers were inside the 10-yard line. The game is tied at 13, 216 remaining. Tom Hodson decides to throw, and he's picked off by Greg Rogan. The senior defensive back goes upfield, and now Ohio State has the ball with 104 left in the fourth, tied at 13. Let's get back to Mike Patrick and Lee Corso. Thanks, Tim. Big battle in Columbus between two of the top five teams. 38 nothing. Miami, third and nine. And incomplete intended for Warren Williams through his hands. Florida and LSU will be part of our doubleheader on our CFA college football presentation next week. That will be the 7.30 game, our 4 o'clock game, South Carolina against Nebraska. Our live coverage of the doubleheader starts at 4, 7.30 for the second game, the Gators and the Tigers. And now Miami will go for the field goal. They spotted it to 34. That's Greg Cox, who has been perfect today and is only uh, four out of four on the season. He'll try a 44 yard. Plenty of distance, and it's true. Greg Cox with a 44-yard field goal for the Hurricanes, and their lead grows to 41-0. Live CFA football is brought to you by Dodge Import Trucks and the new Dodge Ram 50 and Raider. We're going places. And by Yashica. They put a new focus on photography with the new 230 AF autofocus. Somebody intended this sign to mean let's get ready to go to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. What it may mean right now is let's get ready to go back to Fayetteville. It's 41-0, third quarter. Miami in a rump. But these guys don't even know the score, right? <laughs> or don't care. Donnie Centers would love to get something started for the Hurricanes just for their pride. He's standing at the goal line. Centers has to come up for this, takes it at the 10. And does not reach the 25, gets back to the 24-yard line. And Arkansas on offense has not been able to do anything at all with the football. In the first half, that was their best drive. It resulted in a missed field goal. The rest of the time, they simply weren't able to do anything with a tremendous Miami defense, and they only had one turnover. It was a key play along back in the middle of the game when it was third down, and about five or six, and they didn't run the option play. I tell you what, that, that really took a lot out of the Arkansas team. Greg Thomas at quarterback. He'll keep it on the option. Across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Tolbert Bain ran him out of bounds. Arkansas, remember, goes to Miami next year, and the and schedule looks like November the 26th, and they better ask for a large guarantee. Miami is on the schedule. Wichita State should have been here. But Wichita State dropped football, so they replaced them with the Hurricanes. But those, these are the kind of teams you have to play. If you're going to make a national name for yourself, if you're going to be up there in the national rankings, you need to play the best teams in the country. And Miami is obviously one of them. Johnson on the toss across the 30 to about the 31. We are told that Ohio State is at midfield in their game with LSU. Time is running out, 27 seconds to go in the game. They are tied, and of course, Tim Brando will update us 
on the final between LSU and Ohio State. Well, that's a tough place to play in LSU. I coached there one time and lost to LSU 24 to 17. Of all the places I played in, I think that was one of the best places, though, to perform. You, were, you felt like you really were in great football towns. And Southern Cal has come back to take a lead over California. This is third and three. Big play for Arkansas trying to get something going. Thomas turns it up and appears to have the first down shy of the 35 and you can hear the crowd reaction. And there is a flag down on top of it. Now here's the triple option. The quarterback comes down, fakes the number 21 Van Dyke. Thomas, number eight, cuts in, gets hit hard by Myra and 36 blades. But it's a first down and there's a little bit of enthusiasm. Now he, Thomas got really whacked there hard, but he'll be back in the ballgame because he's very competitive. Quinn Grovey will come in, and you see what Arkansas has been able to do on the ground today. 27 yards. Grovey back to throw off play action. Throws complete to his tight end, Billy Winston. Bernard Clark, who was in there at the linebacker for George Myra, made the tackle. Number four. Groby throws a nice cut. Now watch, he throws the ball off his front foot in the coverage, makes a good catch. Now, the one thing you're saying, well, why is that play working right now? Well, Miami doesn't play with the same kind of intensity as, with 41 to nothing as they do nothing, nothing. And that's why the same plays that they used before are now working when they didn't work before. Just shy of the first down at the Arkansas 44. Jim Kessinger, number 95, will come in at a tight end. And Skip Thompson, who was in number 81, the wide receiver, will come out of the ballgame. Grovey getting a signal from the sideline, part of the sellout crowd here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. And they'll go with no wide receivers on second and short. Johnson, he didn't get it. He may have lost a yard on that as Randy Shannon, number 22, was the first man in there and drilled him. Well, you know, I hate to be critical, but I'm going to be on 41 to nothing. You don't run a cross buck play with inches to go because what you do is you keep the ball too long. Now watch, he fakes one way and that's the biggest mistake because Miami doesn't worry about any fakes and here comes one of the 22 Shannon in there and hits the guy really good. You gotta go right at it fast as you can against a team like Miami in short yard. So now it's third a little more than a yard. Grovey on the option, back to Johnson. Got the first down, driven out of bounds. Selwyn Brown, the first man that got a hand on him and then Benny Blades forced him to the sideline. That will be a first down for Arkansas with 6.47 to go third quarter. Outside of the first offensive series, Lee, where they moved the ball on the option, Miami has done a brilliant job of shutting it down, and you have to remember the two times they beat uh, the best wishbone team there is in Oklahoma. They get it back to Rouse this time. He gets the midfield. Let's go to Tim Brando. Another update on Ohio State and LSU. All right, Mike Patrick, thank you very much. Closing seconds of the game. Tommy Hudson again looking to throw from deep in his own territory. Remember that name? Greg Rogan, his second interception. Earl Bruce is happy. He knows he's got a shot. Matt Franz, the senior from Cincinnati, but he misses the field goal try. It could be the day of the tie. 13-13 the final score. Mike Archer will join us live at halftime of our primetime game tonight to talk about it, Mike. Well, you're right about those ties with Auburn and Tennessee playing to a tie. There's the pass outside to J.R. Brown, who checks into the ball game and makes his second reception of the season, 19 yards from Quinn Grovey. Brown, one of the reserve halfbacks, is a very good receiver. Grovey this time does a good job of throwing to the secondary receiver. Number 18, Bain, had moved over to cover one man deep, and he hit him right in his soft spot right there. If they can just get a nice drive and go in and score, come back and play a little bit more football, they can get themselves up and say, look, we beat him in the second half anyhow, didn't we? Big hole for Johnson, and Johnson down to the 24, where he stood up and then planted by Tolbert Bain. Big hit in the secondary. 
Miami now is just standing around. There's, there's Hawkins, number 54, just standing there, not hitting anybody. What could happen right now, which always worried me when I had a big lead, is one of my players to stand around and get hurt mm -hmm. and ruin the rest of the season. They've got to play with the kind of intensity that a game is close, but you can't do that mentally with 41 to nothing. Miami's defense has not given up a point this year. The four points against Florida came on safety. Hawkins is in on that tackle as Johnson can only get back to the line of scrimmage. George Myra back in the ball game was also in there. Now Hawkins is starting to play a little bit. He must have been listening to the show. Number 54, Hawkins in the bottom of your picture makes a good play. Number 94, Mark makes a good play, and they, they stop him. That way they had a little bit more intensity. Now it's third down. You run either the option play, and if you don't get it, you run it again because you got a chance to make a first down. Third and three, Derek Russell, the wide receiver to the top of your screen. Roby back to Johnson. Got a good block in front of him, trying for that first down flag and dove for the sticks. It'll depend on where they mark it. Selwyn Brown helped drive him down. And it's going to be short by about a yard. Now they've You'd think they would be out to go for this as Groby comes to the sideline. They'll probably call timeout to, to make a decision not to go for it, but what play to go for. And Arkansas does use one of its second half timeouts with 4.26 to go. Quarter, it's Miami 41, Arkansas nothing. Four minutes, 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. Lee Corso and Mike Patrick with you, and it's Miami with a 41-0 lead. Look what the Hurricane defense has done this year. They have not allowed an opponent inside their 12-yard line. The four points they have given up both came on safeties. An offense has not scored against them. And understand, they have played against Heisman Trophy winner Kerwin Bell in Florida and 10th-ranked Arkansas. Uh, those are some pretty interesting statistics. Fourth and a yard here. Grovey will keep it and get the first down as he reaches the 20-yard line. Brought down by Rod Carter. On the replay, remember two plays ago I said you run the option right, and if you don't make it, run the option left, and it's exactly what they did. The difference this time, Grovey gets the ball and cuts it up for first down. Good play. Now, if they could just run the option and throw a little pass in the end zone to score a touchdown, then everybody will go crazy, and then they'll think, hey, we're leading 7-0 in the second half. Yeah, just don't Excuse let him look me, at the scoreboard. Three or something like that. Roby brings him out. Running the action again. Hemden to 20, driven out of bounds, and it's Benny Blades. Another good play by Rod Carter. Really strung it out and wouldn't let Roby cut it back this time. Well, Carter's a nice-looking athlete. He's an art major from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 6'1", 219, junior. There's the Southern Cal scores. They have come back after California led early. San Diego State trying to rebound this week. Air Force and winner over Colorado State. We'll update you on everything else that's going on. Wyoming after a scored 17 points in a row. Second and 10. Groby was three for three back to pass. Now he's got to run. Hawkins had him. And then he's brought down from behind by Daniel Stubbs. It'll be a little bit of a frustrating day for Stubbs because Arkansas doesn't throw that much. He is the leading all-time sack man in Miami history. Loves to go after the quarterback. Hasn't had many opportunities. Well, he's a terrific athlete. They say he's probably the outstanding pass rusher in college football today. You know, when he was in basketball, it was high school, his basketball team won the New Jersey championship, and he had the most blocks in the history of the state of New Jersey. 74 in one season. Mm. Third and six for Arkansas. And movement on the offensive line. That looked like Todd Jones, the left tackle. And Ken Hatfield really upset about it. He had his uh, offense doing something for the first time today. Dead ball. Dead ball foul. The illegal procedure the illegal against the offense. Against the Down offense. Down line moved. That'll cost him five. Interesting thing about Stubbs, as a child, he had severe asthma and allergies. And they had to move to Delaware in order to find a place that could take care of him. His dad commuted something like 200 miles a day mm. in order for him to be in a facility that uh, could take care of the asthma and the allergies. Groby has some time, now chased out of the pocket. 
trouble, and they drive him out of bounds at the 23. That defense never quits. Derwin Jones along with Carter. Grovey is, a, is not very big, and he's going to have to learn in this situation, for instance, when he goes back to pass and everything is gone. They've got good pass protection. He makes the move right here. Shannon, number 22 from Miami, gets a beat on him. 91 tries to catch him. Carter, and get out of bounds. Don't let him hit you. You know, there's another play coming up. And listen to these fans. They were not very happy when they saw Kendall Trainer come on. He will try a 40-yard field goal. And he hooked it wide left. Trainer has missed for the second time in the ball game, and Miami is preserving its shutout at 41 to nothing. And coach, we know how you feel. I think all of us have been in that position before. 255 to go third quarter, and it's a shutout for the Canes. ESPN Speed World coverage of Formula Racing will continue tomorrow. Flag to flag coverage of Grand Prix of Spain. Airtime 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 noon Pacific. Miami with a ball at its own 21 yard line. A missed field goal attempt. Walsh still in their quarterback. And that one almost picked off, intended for the tight end Henry. And almost intercepted. Walsh goes, back to pass. Walsh goes back to pass this time, and he tries to get forced the ball. The first time he's forced the ball all day into coverage, 54 Owens is a good place to try to get down, but doesn't get, doesn't get it. That's the first absolutely what I would consider bad judgment pass that he's thrown all day. And that's really what you would more expect to see Kerry Owens, that linebacker on the tight end, rather than trying to cover Irvin or Blades. Williams. Diving forward to the 28-yard line. Sometimes you wonder, what happened to this guy, Cherico, the great player? Well, sometimes when you get down in the middle there, there's a lot of guys blo blocking here. There's Holder, number 64, gets a piece of him, and that's a tough position to play. In fact, some people in the pros refuse to play it. Yes, they do. Because you get hit at so many different angles that you don't know what to do. I know Dave Butts of the Redskins didn't want any part of it. He wanted to stay at defensive tackle. Third down and four. Just a tough way to make a living. Playing a nose man position. Henry, the tight end of the 39, brought down by Atwater, who was right there in a hurry. But it's going to be a Miami first down. You know, this is, this is a typical situation, but I'm going to give you another statistic about Miami. They have won 22 straight regular season games. The last time they lost in a regular season was to Florida, 35-22 in 1985. This is a fine football program. And if this isn't one of the top two teams in the country, uh, I'm missing something. I mean, these guys have everything. Brett. Dodged over his own man. What a great move and gets nearly to midfield. Atwater brought him down again. Just a very slick move by fullback Melvin Bratton. Oh, Bratton has, has got real good quickness. Now watch, he'll take a little crossover step. He's reading the outside. He gets a good block by 24 Williams. 57 busted, missed the tackle. There goes 39 with it flying through the air. And I tell you what, he's a big, strong running back. But you know what he's interested in college is? Stage. He's a theater minor. Can you imagine that guy on the on stage? Tough to take to give him direction, right? Williams takes a little dump off pass to the Arkansas well, 37 forced out of bounds there by Owens. I'll tell you a story of what happened to me. My, one of my Here best friend is Joe Brodsky. He's the offensive backfield coach, and I went down to see him about three years ago, and I, he said, I want you to meet my two running backs. And he brings in High Smith and Brett. And I said, they, look, they, were, they were beautiful looking athletes. I said, these guys are your running backs. I hate to see your tackles. They got some good looking athletes at Miami. Williams now over 100 yards rushing, and the last guy to do that in a regular season game was Melvin Bratton, 105 yards. That was in the season opener in 1986. Come Williams on, Reggie, again. tackle, Flag Reggie. Is down. Reggie he Hall. The Arkansas 44, Reggie Hall made the tackle along with Carl Bradford. And that's the way you look when you're down 41 nothing on your turf against an invading team, and you came into the game 10th ranked in the nation. In a place you won 10 straight games. That's right. Miami just has an incredible 
road record. 15 regular season wins in a row on the road. 17 out of 18. The only place they've lost on the road during the regular season under Jimmy Johnson. The legal use of the hands against the offense. And as you see, this penalty will go against Miami. The only place they have lost was at Michigan. And uh, that's certainly no sin. A lot of people have lost at Michigan. That was a, a bad day for Bernie Kozar. But they haven't had many of those bad days. Delayed Williams broke a couple of tackles, quitted in Atwater at the Arkansas 46. Well, you know Arkansas is lo losing. When we're up here at the 50-yard line, we hear the quarterback say, "Black 90." It's so quiet. That's the that's the 90 play. That's the off tackle play. You know it's quiet. Remember we talked about the crowd staying in the game and giving Arkansas an advantage. You well, forget it. When you can hear the automatics this far away, the game is over. Well, the bodies are still here, but the spirits left uh, middle of the second quarter. Second and nine for Miami. Walsh wants the screen, throws it out for Williams. Got a nice block there. And Williams still on his feet. Number 68, very painful, avoided wow. disaster, getting him a block outside. Williams is impressive to me because of the fact that he breaks so many tackles, you know? That's the end of the third quarter here in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's Miami 41, Arkansas nothing. Back with the fourth period in a moment. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Miami continues to run away with it, 41 to nothing. And they own this ball game. And apparently the ball, which says University of Miami on it. Hurricanes third and three at the Arkansas 40. Walsh to Henry, his big tight end has it again, lost it. Loose ball. Miami got it back. Holy cow. At the 34-yard line, Henry coughed it up. And Miami got the ball right back. John O'Neill, the left tackle, recovered. Miami's doing a nice little thing with Henry. They're running him into the seams real short, and Walsh throws it to him good. Now he gets hit from behind, drops the football, and when it's your day, it's your day. Now they've got to be 17 guys from Arkansas touch this ball, and O'Neill, O'Neill, number 75, slips in and gets it. And it's a first down for Miami. Arkansas, if they're taping this game, it's just like to hit the erase button and forget about it. Bratton can't get outside. Brought down by Roland and LaSalle Harper. Harper, a linebacker, a junior college All-American that they recruited. And here's an update on some more uh, finals out of the East for you. Ball spotted at the 34, where it'll be second and 10. 14 minutes exactly to go in this ball game. Seventh ranked Miami, you'd have to expect them to move up in the ratings. Uh, seventh ranked in one poll, fifth in the other. Uh, they almost certainly move up after this one. Walsh throws and Irvin. A little lack of concentration, I think, there and lost uh, lost the handle on it. Irvin is, is, some pro scouts think he's the best receiver in the country right now. You know, they're so afraid of him, they're going to get, they give him more and more. They had a blitz that time, number 54, Owens come. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. He doesn't concentrate, and Cooley comes in and tries to hit him, but, uh, well, just, he's a perfectionist. That's the one thing I've noticed about him automatically. He wants every single play to be completed. He's had three dropped, and he's still 19 out of 27 for 209 yards and a touchdown. Just had an exceptional game. No pressure again. Throws this time for Williams out of the backfield inside the 30. And the Arkansas defense converges on him there, led by Otis Lloyd. Now, we talked to, at the start of this ball game that Miami likes to throw under coverage. That was the coverage that Arkansas was going to give them. It was obviously not working. Why didn't they come with the blitz more, do you think? They were running the ball so effectively. What Miami did was a good point. They thought the same thing we did, that, my, that Arkansas would give them the short pass, and they left themselves wide open for the run. The running game has really clobbered Arkansas. Greg Cox, who already has two field goals, will come on to try one. Ball spotted at the 37. It is a 47-yard attempt. It has the distance, and it's good. <laughs> 
Miami with 12.59 game lengthens the lead again. It's 44-0 over Arkansas. Number seven against number 10 has proved to be no contest. Miami 44, Arkansas nothing, 12.59 to go in the ball game. Donnie Centers may have a chance to bring one back from three yards deep. Got a seam. Donnie Centers driven out of bounds at the 37-yard line by Edgar Bennis, the man who kicked it off. And there is a flag down. Donnie Centers on the kick return. We'll check the penalty for you as you check out some of those other scores. Florida big today. Michigan in a walk over Long Beach State. Texas A&M beats Southern Mississippi. Syracuse came from behind. Big victory on the road of Virginia Tech. Georgia over South Carolina. We have a dead ball. Dead ball foul. Face mask. Face mask. And you could have almost guessed, couldn't you, that it would go against Arkansas. It's been those kind. Of, it's been one of those kind of days. So the face mask call. And, and we believe it was the guy who returned it. Sure, now watch. That's illegal. You cannot do that. Nobody can use the face mask. Oh. Watch it from another angle. He, he tries a stiff arm, which is a good idea, except you don't grab the face mask. Well, Bennis got a ride he didn't expect. You know, there are going to be some people, 44 to nothing score, are going to say, uh, you know, did Jimmy Johnson run this score up? And there's no way. Uh, no way at all he did that, even with the starters in here. They need to run their offense. They've got a sophomore quarterback. They need to find out what he can do. Quinn Grovey continues as the quarterback. He wants to go deep this time and overthrown Russell. Russell had a step on McDowell, who is the reserve corner, and the nickelback. Grovey had him out there, and he missed him. But they get a nice hand for just going downfield for the idea. Boy, you know it's been a bad day when they cheer a long, incomplete yeah, pass. that's right. And a bad day it has been. You really like Jimmy Johnson's style of coaching. Oh, yeah, I tell you what. You know, one thing, people, I had a meeting with him this morning. You know what he's most proud of? The fact that his defensive team has improved more in the last three years than any other defensive team in America. Barry Foster in there for the first time, number 18 at fullback. Roby dumps it off to J.R. Byron. And Brown gets a couple. Maurice Crum, reserve linebacker, brought him down. You know, Miami gets a lot of publicity about quarterback university, et cetera. The reason why they're winning the last two or three years is because their defense used to give up 24 points a game before Jimmy got there, and now they only give up 12. He was a great defensive coach at Oklahoma State, at Pittsburgh, at uh, Arkansas, right here as an assistant. Got to be a, a great time for him coming back uh, to Arkansas, his alma mater, where he was an All-American. Grovey back to throw. Pocket collapses, and he rushes out of it. Grovey, 40, 45, fumble the ball. Let's see who got it. No signal yet from the official. And it's Miami football. Grovey, after a fine play, coughs it up. And the Hurricanes recover. Jimmy Jones comes out with the ball. Well, when it goes bad, it goes bad. His Grovey goes back to pass. They flush him out. He does a great athletic job of getting it open, but he's holding the ball. You notice how he's holding the ball out too wide? He should tuck that ball away. Now, he's only a young player. He'll remember that. And number 63, Jimmy Jones from Miami, from Okeechobee, Florida, makes the play. There's Johnson. It's going all right, Jim. Just relax. Everything's fine. Watch. Yeah. And Grovey, after a 17-yard carry, making something happen, so upset about it, the young man turns the football over. 11.56 to go, still 44-0. Live CFA football is being brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. Something else you can believe in? The Miami Hurricanes. They're up 44 0 over the 10th ranked Razorbacks of Arkansas. We have 11.56 to go in the game. Erickson comes in at quarterback as Miami takes over at the Arkansas 43. Yeah. 
Cleveland, Gary, and Conley. The running back's behind him, and this is Conley. And Conley gets down to the 41-yard line. Update some of the bigger scores we have for you. A tie, Auburn and Tennessee, 2020. And another major tie, 13-13, Ohio State and LSU. Auburn, of course, had the ball deep in Tennessee territory and could not stop the clock. It ran out before they could set up for anything. Wasn't that a big controversial play, though? It looked like uh, there was a delay by Tennessee. Erickson throws near side, complete the blades. And he's down to the 30-yard line. Brian, the older brother of defensive back All-American Benny Blades, knocked out of bounds by Cooney. A couple of uh, real high watermarks in this game. Greg Cox, a school record, eight consecutive field goals. And that's got to be very pleasing to Miami because he had a poor 1986. He had an interesting reason for it. He said, for some reason, they just didn't give him enough practice time on the kicking game. And he went to the coach and asked, you know, he said he wanted the punter to be his holder. And he wanted to get some more practice time. And he got it, and it worked out very well for him. Well, right now, they don't need him. But I tell you what, they play they play a good team next week at Florida State in Tallahassee, Florida. They might need him, and that's why those important plays were those field goals. Miami always plays a tremendous intersectional schedule. They always have, even uh, in the down years when they weren't doing well, and they just go get uh, pounded by people week in and week out. They're now doing the pounding against a great schedule. Grovey on the sideline, waiting for a chance to get back in. Second and seven. Erickson with plenty of time. Great pass protection by Miami. Conley out of the backfield, gets to the 23-yard line, wrapped up there. LaSalle Harper on the stop. Well, I can tell you right now, from just four plays of Erickson, he could start right now for Arkansas. He could start for half of the teams I've seen this year. Yep. And the one thing about it, Gary Stevens, the quarterback coach, must do a great job because these guys look like clones. They're throwing the ball to the right people. They're both young. They've got a good conception. They know what, how to pass protection. They know how to throw the ball. They've got a fine national football-like looking team, don't they? Down to nine minutes and 40 seconds to go for <laughs> Erickson. Here comes the blitz. He picks it up, throws complete to the sideline to Dawkins. The talent just keeps coming. Now what they do right there, what they do there is that they put those, they put your feet in ice right away if you have any kind of a twisted ankle because of the fact, number one, they don't want it to swell. And that's what uh, Proven are doing right there. Scott Proven and Matt Patchen on the sideline. Must feel pretty good after uh, working out all the time out there. And a flag goes down before the snap. And there's an interesting statistic, statistic excuse me, about the offensive line from Miami, from Miami. They got four of the five guys are from out of state. Good ball. A legal procedure against the offense in the neutral zone. Legal procedure. Going to cost them five yard line or five yards and move them back near the 30. And Jimmy Johnson wants to know exactly what that was. Don't forget, coming up right after our ball game, Penn State and Boston College. Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley bringing you that ball game. Eric's freshman out of Atlanta, Florida, and a quarterback. Got some pressure this time for his deep over the middle. Nobody there. Intended for Andre Brown, who was the deep receiver. And Erickson put it uh, 10 yards short of one receiver, 10 yards over another. Again, that just shows you what kind of day it is. That pass should have been intercepted. But he threw the ball the only spot that wasn't an Arkansas guy. I mean, and that's, it was that's a, the first pass he's yeah. missed on the, on the afternoon. Five out of six for 50 yards in relief of Steve Walsh, who had a brilliant ball game. Second and 15. Erickson against pressure throws. This one intercepted by Cooney. Cooney back to the 20. Still on his feet at the 25, driven down at the 27. There is a flag down on the play as Anthony Cooney who has been picked on in past games, picked that one off from Craig Erickson. We'll check the penalty. The flag appeared to have come on the return. I think you'll see a clip. A clip against the defense on the return, 15 yards. So it will be an Arkansas possession. 
Anthony Cooley. He's a former high school quarterback, drops back. Now watch number 28, gets in a good back pedal. He's in his own defense. The ball is overthrown. He catches the ball. That's at least one good thing. Now the rule is, once there's a change of possession, you cannot block below the waist and or from behind. And that's why it's a 15-yard penalty. But they'll march it off and take Arkansas all the way back to their own 13-yard line. So with 9.17 to go in the ballgame, Quinn Grovey will come back on the field to lead this Arkansas offense, which has done virtually nothing today. Grovey himself, seven yards rushing, 41 passing. He gives it to Van Dyke up the middle, and Van Dyke for about three to the 10-yard line. Willis Pegues, number 58, back up defensive end for All-American Daniel Stubbs is in the ballgame. Now keep this in mind. Miami has played Florida and Arkansas. They have given up four points, both on safeties. This is an incredible defense, maybe the best in the country, and it's game time on the sideline. I'll tell you one thing. When Jimmy Johnson gets back and sees that tape, I don't know who those two guys are, Brown and Ellis. I'll guarantee you one thing. I promise you that they will be running at 6 o'clock Monday morning. <laughs> hey, Miami. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? There's something about beating a football team, but you never, ever do that on the sideline. And he doesn't know it now, but he, I promise you, when he gets home, somebody will him. tell him. Ooh, can they'll, those two, the set, 6 o'clock Monday morning, they'll be running around the Miami Stadium. Third and three. Groby wants to throw under all the pressure in the world, and he sacked at the 17, or at the 7-yard line, Maurice Crump. The linebacker coming on the blitz, and Grovey never had a chance. Crum is one of my favorite players, number 49. He's a first-year freshman from Hillsborough High School in Tampa. The reason why I like Hillsborough, my wife of 30 years, Betsy, graduated from Hillsborough High School. I've been waiting for Crum to do something all day. Oh, he just got in the ball game. Dawkins is deep to receive, as Kendall Trainer will have to punt from his own end zone. On fourth and 14. Low end over end. Dawkins, look at this. He's got a chance. Kendall Trainer, the kicker, had to make the tackle inside the five. Well, even when they put in the reserve kick returner, he brings it back 36 yards. The reserve defense holds Arkansas. It is all Miami today. Dale Dawkins, sophomore from Vero Beach, gets a little block in the middle there by number 27. Michael Johnson, and there he goes. They've got so much talent. You know, I found one thing, that you never want to play a good team away from home because they can only bring their good players. You'd rather play Nebraska there where they got 100 guys, not 50. Ball spotted just outside the five, first and goal. At the six. Richard Brothers makes the tackle on Alex Johnson. And we're having a little barbecue on the sideline. Johnson into the ball game for the first time. He's in at halfback. Warren Williams and Leonard Conley have done the job in there. And also in at fullback, Shannon Kroll. Second goal. Goal gets to the four. Otis Lloyd makes the tackle. And the Miami players having a good time. Jimmy Johnson uh, has got to be enjoying this with a 44 0 lead. Well, you know, Jimmy a, was a, a graduate of Arkansas in, in psychology. And this morning I had to talk to him about his theory of Pygmalion effect psychology. That's psychology of high expectations and positive reinforcement. And I tell you what, when you win 16 on the road, I'm going to try some of that Pygmalion if I ever get back into coaching. <laughs> Third and goal at the four. Nelson wants to throw. Plenty of time. Guns it over the middle. Brown, touchdown. Erickson with a touchdown pass and a rifle shot to junior Andre Brown, and it is 50 to nothing. Miami over Arkansas. Do you believe this? Okay, you're also going to have a, a probably a conversation on the Arkansas sideline of why did Jimmy Johnson 
throw the football with 44 to nothing. Eaton is old school here because Jimmy Johnson does not call the offensive plays. It was called from upstairs. It doesn't look good when you're winning 44 to nothing and throw a touchdown pass, and I don't care where it is. I mean, you run the ball, and if you don't score, you leave it there. Kick a field goal. Cox comes on to try the point after. A whistle will stop play, and it didn't look like they got it off in time, so it'll cost them five. Watch Erickson. He goes back to pass. It's good, good protection in there by number 68, Panfill. Throws the ball to Brown coming across the middle. Now, there's Brown. He's probably been about the fourth team. And look at him. Good-looking athlete like him. And Dawkins, number 11, set it up with that beautiful punt return. Cox will now try a longer extra point. But it's right down the pipe. And the lead grows again. It's Miami, 51, Arkansas, nothing. I understand that's for players under 60 to 6 4. We ought to see some pretty good jump shooters in that lake. You will not see any players from Miami. <laughs> they all look like 6 6 and better. Donnie centers deep. 646 to go in the game. And Miami has just really served notice on the rest of the country what kind of football team it is. 51 0 over 10th ranked Arkansas. As the Hurricanes celebrate with 646 to go in the ball game. We'll pause for this message. We'll be back in just a moment. One nothing, a party atmosphere here in Little Rock, but the party got off to a rocky start early. Grovey on the option. Keeps the ball, gets up to about the 23. Mercifully, this one is winding down with 6.35 to go. But it'll be a nice plane ride back to Miami. The Hurricanes were delayed coming in here for almost three hours. The last time they had a long delay in a ball game was when they were delayed two and a half hours getting to uh, Boston College by a hurricane and they won 48 to 10. So Jimmy Johnson may just delay every flight from now on and win by at least 40 points. Groving under pressure, scrambling. Gets away, got room to run. Across the 30 to the 31 for a first down. Well, the young man can really scramble at 174 pounds. Boy, Grovey's a very competitive guy. He, what, what he should do is just stay eligible enough for arena ball. He could be all world in arena ball. Watch. He tries to throw a long pass, cannot get the ball off, and then from then on, he's got some great athletic ability. I just wish he would carry the ball with a little bit more protection, but he's learning. See how he slipped the ball to his left hand and moved forward? He obviously is an exciting player for the Arkansas Raiders. He's got to learn not to take shots, yeah. too, at only 5'10", 174 pounds. Juju Harshaw, number 44, freshman fullback, is in there now. Grovey this time throws, complete to his tight end, Winston, across the 40, 45, battling for more yardage out to about the 48-yard line. Brought down by Maurice Crum, number 49. And number 58, Willis Pegues. And one streak had to be broken in this game unless it was a tie. Arkansas, after 10 straight wins here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, will lose. Miami will have won its 16th straight. And they don't play the Little Sisters of the Poor on the road either. First and 10, Arkansas with 5.09 to go. One of their rare trips toward midfield. Grovey against the second team Miami defense. Airs it out for centers off his fingertips. Covered back there by Bubba McDowell and Kenny Berry. Grovey gets back in the pass and watch this. This is a good play because he throws the ball in perfect position. McDowell, number 48, goes up and comes and knocks the ball out of his hands of, of centers, number one. Now watch him get hit right here after he throws it. That's a legal hit because he was going through the motion and didn't, didn't take more than one step when he hit him. Skip Thompson, number 81, had a wide receiver. Groby on the quarterback draw. Very slippery runner still on his feet at the 40. 35, 31-yard line of Miami. When Groby keeps the football, then it's Kelleher made the stop. 23-yard run by Quinn Roby in relief of Greg Thomas. 
Dennis Kelleher makes the tackle, number 88, the defensive end who chased him down. This was a predetermined play. This was a quarterback draw. He avoids three or four players. He gets away from number 67, Maryland, and he drives himself forward. He's in a very exciting play, and you know what? He makes things happen. Now, they got him out of there for one reason. He might have landed on his shoulder, or they're going to give him a break. Thomas back in. Takes the hard shot, gives to Johnson. Johnson plows his way ahead down to about the 27-yard line. Okay, that's Beck at number 65. He's the first Arkansas player to graduate in three years with a major in political science. He's a second-year law student. His father and brother both played at Arkansas. Grovey comes back in at quarterback after that one play breather. And Beckett is one of those guys who has gotten everything out of his ability. He is not a great physical specimen. Johnson on the toss to the 20, still on his feet at the 15, down to the 11-yard line. And the Arkansas fans finally have something to cheer about as Greg Mark, number 94, makes the tackle downfield after his 16-yard game. Remember, Miami has not allowed anybody inside the 12-yard line to have a lot of touchdowns. So it's a matter now of personal pride. Nice little pitch out to number 19, Johnson. He gets a good block by number 44, and he drives himself down the field. And that first team defense for Miami is on the sideline cheering on the second team defense. They want to stop them. The defense has not been scored on this year in two games. Harshaw, the fullback, down to about the seven. Russell Maryland, number 67 on his back. Of course, Ken Hatfield wants to score. You don't want to be shut out. You saw the last time they were shut out. And we're down to 320 to go. This may be Arkansas's last crack at it. Second and six. Rouse. He's got room to run. And Rouse cuts down Arkansas. Some of the crowd remaining here, and Ken Hatfield with a little smirk on his face as his team gets on the scoreboard with 3.02 to go. Rouse with his 14th career touchdown. Trainer for the point after. And he's got it. So Arkansas finally gets off the dime as Rouse goes six yards. Watch a little misdirection play, number four. Bobby hands off the 35. Rouse, and he goes in and scores. Now, I wanted to make one statement. There was only one Miami starter in there, number 94. Everyone here agrees with that sign. Support the negotiations. Let's get this silly thing over with. 51-7 right now. Miami leading Arkansas here in Little Rock. Kendall Trainer is on to kick. At this point, do you bother with an onside kick? Oh, or? sure. All yeah. Right. You're, if nothing else, you practice it. They might need it against Texas A&M in about four weeks to win the game. Oh, no, this, is, this is good football, and it's good for Miami, too. They might need it against Florida State next right. week. What you mean is you never give up coaching. That's right. Trainer, loose ball. And it looked like Tolbert Bain got it. Right now, let's check in with Jim Kelly at Sullivan Stadium in Boston. All right, Mike, as you know, the home of the New England Patriots. Patriots right now passing rocks and bottles and eggs instead of the football. We'll pass the pigskin plenty. A wide open game with Boston College and Cowboy Jack McNell and 14th ranked Penn State, the defending national champion. A good crowd, over 55,000 expected. A court injunction, no picket line. So we've got Boston College and Penn State coming up. Let's go back to Mike. Jim, thanks very much. 2.59. We hope uh, your game is a little bit more competitive than this one has been. I know Arkansas had great hopes coming in, but uh, they didn't pan out. And Miami is obviously one of the best teams in the country. Erickson at quarterback. Foul and Jensen behind him. And Erickson, the naked bootleg. 
Young man's got some speed. He gets out of bounds right about the first down marker at the Arkansas 33-yard line. That's not in the playbook. That was an automatic toss to the left, and everybody went to the left, and Erickson went to the right, and he makes 12 yards or 14 yards and looks like a very fine football player running it. If this score holds up, it would be Arkansas's worst loss since 1943 when they were beaten by Tulsa 61 to nothing. 2.52 to go in this game. I want to thank John Hahn, our spotter from Miami, Mike Carr from Arkansas, and of course, as always, John Madry, our statistician. And they'll go to Alex Johnson, down to about the 32-yard line. You can see the clock in the uh, bottom right-hand portion of your screen. And that's all Miami is working on right now as we update you on some of the baseball scores. Toronto came from behind with a huge win there. And we understand it's Shannon Crowell. They called him Crowell, and he's got the football. Hurdling one tackler down to the 27-yard line. Take a look at the remaining games from Miami. You can tell what kind of schools they play on this schedule. And they've got uh, Florida State at Tallahassee, always a tough place to play. Then Maryland, East Carolina, Cincinnati. You see Miami of Ohio, Virginia Tech. The big one, the one everybody might be waiting for, November 28th against Notre Dame. And then South Carolina, which might give Miami a shot at an undefeated season. That game definitely on ESPN. That's on our schedule. Erickson play fake naked bootleg again. This time they have it diagnosed. He's brought down by Albert Harris, number 68. Let's take a look at the Arkansas schedule, and you're going to see some games that on paper they should be able to win until you get down to 11-14, maybe 11-7. Baylor with a, a fine ball game today, but Texas A&M certainly could be a game for the conference championship, and that one will be played in College Station. This Coach Kenny Hatfield, he started his career in Helena, Arkansas. Let me tell you something about that guy. I'll tell you in a second. Third and 11, they keep it on the ground. A lot of people don't understand, know this, but you know what? He started a new trend. When he went to the Air Force Academy, he put the wishbone offense in. The next person to put it in was Jim Young at Army, and now they put it in at Navy. He started a complete trend where every service academy now runs right. the wishbone based on what that man right there did at the Air Force Academy. At newest Miami running back, number 34, Tracy Waiters. He's in there with Johnson. And fourth and five, and Miami will go for it. They'll give it to Johnson, cuts off the left side. He's got the first down to the 20 to the Arkansas 17-yard line, and the clock will stop on the first down with 31 seconds left. You know, my, University of Miami is only 60 years old, but they're still the largest independent teaching and research university in the Southeast, and that man, Jimmy Johnson, is bringing them up to where they could really, there's no question, play in the national championship game again. Went on a trip to Miami when I was in college and saw guys going to uh, back and forth to class in boats, and I said, boy, I'm, I'm growing up in the wrong area. And they take it with number 31, Freddie Highsmith. And if that's a uh, familiar name in Miami football, uh, it ought to be. Alonzo, of course, had a great career here. And the clock ticks down. And Jimmy Johnson will get another big victory ride across the field here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. And certainly he deserves all the credit in the world along with his ball club. They had an excellent game plan offensively and defensively. And this has got to be one of the most lopsided victories you could ever expect. Arkansas came in undefeated and ranked 10th, and Miami simply blew them away. And you know, it's got to be something special. The, the man played here. This is his school. That's his teammate there, right. the 1964 National Championship team. He was a captain of that team. He loves Arkansas. His team was just so much better than Arkansas. He wasn't playing. And he, there's nothing he could do. He just clobbered them. Well, if you're going to come home, you might as well do it this way. Come in and win by 44. That's our final here in Little Rock. 51-7 Miami over Arkansas. And we'll be back to wrap it up from Little Rock in just a moment. Live CFA football has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Aids for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you.
by Qantas, the airline of Australia, and the experts to the South Pacific. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. Our final score here in Little Rock, the Hurricanes of Miami 51, the Arkansas Razorbacks 7. And our Volvo players of the game are from the University of Miami, Steve Walsh, 20 of 28, 214 yards, a brilliantly called game, and the sophomore, our player of the game for Miami. And for Arkansas, redshirt freshman quarterback Quinn Grovey, who came off the bench to complete 5 of 7 for 55 yards, also rushed for 24, would have been far more than that, except the sacks are deducted from his rushing yardage. Volvo will provide $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Coming up next, Penn State and Boston. Our final score here in Little Rock, a stunner, Miami 51 and Arkansas 7. Coming up next, the Nittany Lions of Penn State and the Eagles of Boston College. Excellent game for third-year sophomore Steve Walsh. 214 yards passing, a touchdown in two ball games against Florida and Arkansas. He has thrown for nearly 450 yards with a couple of touchdowns, and this young man is going to put himself in the record books as Jimmy Johnson wins his 31st game in four years as the Miami head coach. He has lost only eight times. Our final score again, Miami 51, Arkansas 7. The Hurricanes undefeated. Arkansas drops to 2-1.